Good morning, Dean O'Rourke, Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty and guests, proud parents, family, friends, and of course our esteemed graduates, the class of 2016. Congratulations. I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here celebrating this very special occasion with you. And make no mistake about it, what you graduates have accomplished thus far is truly remarkable. Before I begin, though, I would like to thank Dean O'Rourke for today's invitation and for affording me the opportunity, really, the extraordinary privilege to be your commencement speaker. I can't tell you how much of an honor it is and, and to be here excite, so excited to address you, even though I am a graduate of GW Law. <laughs> And before I go on, I just because I, I recall, you know, I, I want, just want to take a brief moment to acknowledge the many family members who are here, parents and grandparents, siblings, spouses, children, significant others, and all the friends um, who, who are here in this audience. You know, as the mother of two, uh, I know the tremendous sense of pride that you all feel today in your graduate as you see them wearing their cap and gown. And you know, this is undoubtedly a, a dream come true after so many years of school and really so many student loans. But in all sincerity, I hope that you all feel this um, incredible shared sense of accomplishment yourselves because each of you has played a role in their success, if not only through your love, support and guidance. So, congratulations to all of you. Since it was founded in 1872, BU Law has been a pillar for diversity and a home to many firsts. For those of you who may not be aware, when BU opened its law doors, unlike most schools, it accepted women and many people of different races, and religious beliefs. As I stand here today, I think of Lelia Josephine Robinson, the first woman to graduate from BU Law, who advocated and passed a bill for women to join the Massachusetts Bar. I also am reminded of the Honorable Edward Brooke, who was elected Attorney General of Massachusetts in 1962, the first African American to be appointed as State Attorney General and also later the first African American to become United States Senator. And I certainly have to note another first among us here today, Dean Maureen O'Rourke, who became the first woman leader of this exceptional school in 2004. <laughs> These are just a couple of examples of the many individuals who have paved the path for many of you and for me. You know, as the first woman in United States, uh, as first woman in Latina United States attorney, that's a fact that's not lost on me. And it has been a source of, of strength and encouragement for me. And I hope for others as well. In my position, I have the privilege to speak to a variety of different audiences across the country. But nothing quite compares to addressing a group of law graduates, especially here in Boston. For me, speaking to our future leaders in the legal community provides me with the rare opportunity to reflect upon my own path. From my neighborhood in Spanish Harlem to my law school graduation and now to my tenure as U.S. Attorney. As I prepared for today's commencement address, I asked myself, what inspirational words of wisdom can I impart to the graduates? What would I have wanted to know when I was in your shoes? Let me start by telling you that when I graduated from law school, I thought I knew the path my life would take. Despite what some might view as challenges of growing up in a housing project in New York City, I knew early on that I wanted to be a lawyer. Although at first, it was uh, the Perry Mason show that motivated me. And for those of you too young to know about that show, it was the law and order of my time. Um, as I got older, I realized that I wanted to become a lawyer because it would be a profession which would not only intellectually challenge me, 
but it would also enable me to seek justice for the most vulnerable members of our society. I have been fortunate in that I have found that and so much more. Over the course of my legal career, I opened my mind to many areas of the law. I challenged myself as a state and federal prosecutor, as a criminal defense attorney, as a civil litigator, <clears throat> and then also as a program coordinator at Harvard Law School Center for Criminal Justice, working on criminal justice reforms in Guatemala. I even worked on the now infamous NFL locker room case involving allegations against the New England Patriots by a female sport, uh, reporter, sports reporter making allegations that she had been sexually harassed while interviewing players in the locker room. That case started an entire national debate about women's uh, role in reporting, especially sports reporting, with many opining that they belonged in the kitchen and not in a male's team locker room. That was in the early 90s, not that long ago, but frankly, that conversation continues today. For me, time and time again, I have found my calling in public service, which has challenged and fulfilled me. It has been a way for me to give back for all that I have been fortunate to achieve and inspired me to be a mentor and a role model, model especially within my own community. And this has been especially true during my tenure as U.S. Attorney. You know, looking back over the past seven years, I could not be more proud to be a member of the Department of Justice family, especially during this administration. While the department's number one priority is to combat terrorism, we dedicate tremendous resources to fighting financial and healthcare fraud, cybercrime, public corruption, gun and gang violence, and of course, to protect the civil rights of all citizens. Each and every day, we are committed to ensuring public safety as best we can, but that doesn't mean that the system is perfect. As someone intimately familiar with the justice system, I have the utmost faith in it, but it is with this perspective that I also acknowledge the issues that require reform. The President of the United States and Attorney General agree that reform is necessary, which is why the Department of Justice has announced crucial reforms to strengthen various aspects of the criminal justice system with the goal of imparting fairness, reducing recidivism, and strengthening communities. Known as the Roadmap to Reentry, the reform package is a comprehensive vision to reduce recidivism through a number of reentry initiatives. I don't think you realize this, but over 600,000 formerly incarcerated individuals return to their communities every year after serving their time, but inevitably encounter institutionalized barriers that prevent them from obtaining employment, housing, education, credit. In short, these barriers strip them of the opportunities needed to foster their ability to become productive members of the community, even though they have paid their debt to society. The bottom line is that we cannot prosecute or incarcerate ourselves and our way into a safer nation. That course is a betrayal to the principles of this country, and it is up to your generation to champion change by advocating for our justice system to be smart on crime rather than just tough on crime. You know, in addition to all of the law enforcement efforts that you see on TV every night, whether it's uh, takedowns, uh, surveillance, uh, undercover operations, courtroom battles, much of our time is also spent on prevention, intervention, and outreach into the communities that we serve. The extension of prosecutors beyond the courtroom and into the community is a critical part of what we do every day and part of being smart on crime. I am proud to consider myself a public servant. Each day I have the privilege to work alongside the most talented and devoted law enforcement officials in this country. And that was most evident during the weeks following the horrible events surrounding the Marathon bombing, a day that is typically reserved for celebration of our patriotic heritage. 
and one that unfortunately coincided with your own law school years. As you know, on that day, almost three years ago, two bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, not far from where we are today. On that city, on that day, this city was shaken to its core. And so was BU, because your community lost one of its own, beautiful and talented Lindsay Liu, who will always be remembered. The Boston did not falter. It stood tall and it stood strong, as BU did. After the explosions, the first responders and regular citizens alike immediately sprang into action. The tireless effort of all, from my colleagues leading the investigation to the agents and police on the streets of Watertown, you know, combing it block by block just a few days later, culminating in the apprehension of the one living suspect. You know, it was a night of celebration for Boston, and for my colleagues and me, it truly was the first full night of relief after a nerve-wracking and challenging week. And Boston, like BU, knowing no other way, has remained strong and resilient. As your commencement speaker, I know I'm expected to impart some advice to you today. And while I'm still finding my own way, and you'll realize that as you go through life, you continue to find your own way at various different segments, and especially now as I near the end of my term as United States Attorney, I can say with certainty that in the coming months, years, and decades, each of you will follow planned and unplanned paths. Your career will be guided by many things from your personal life to your changing interests. What you are ambitious for, what you desire today, five years from now, 10, 20, will change. Whatever you do, follow your dreams and dare to want it all. Don't limit yourself or allow others to define you or to hold you back. Don't be afraid to overcome stereotypes. I know it sounds simple, but it's a basic principle that I've lived with throughout my whole life, and it has truly helped me to get to where I am today. I believe that your dreams can be fulfilled not just by ambition, but by surrounding yourself with the people who believe in you, will encourage and support you. <clears throat> Last weekend, I had the privilege of meeting Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, an inspiration and a role model for me. She was in Boston for a youth symposium and also to, to, for a number of uh, community gatherings where she spoke to a number of Latino community activists who were in awe of her and all that she has accomplished. What she said was a lesson to all of us. She was very humble and she thanked them. She said that by standing on their shoulders and following in the path that have been paved by many of them, she had been able to fulfill her dreams. So now she recognizes the greatness that she has been able to achieve and the importance of paving the way forward for many who see themselves where she was so many years ago and want to follow in her footsteps. Recognizing and appreciating that you would not be where you are but for the sacrifices and accomplishments of many others should motivate and empower you so that you yourselves can be mentors and role models and leaders, especially for our youth as you move forward in your career and in your life. And I urge you, don't stand on the sidelines. Dean O'Rourke gave a very powerful speech about issues that are occurring in this country, especially in this post-Ferguson era, especially as we strive to protect you and yet are very considerate and balancing privacy rights, especially as there's talk about building borders and not allowing certain people into our country. It's easy to be cynical. It's easy to criticize, to just sit back. 
But that isn't what this is, country is made of. That's not what you're made of. And so I urge you, don't just sit back and be cynical. Get involved, lend your voice, lend your efforts, especially when it comes to law enforcement and government. Change it from within, become a part of it, because we need more diversity, we need more inclusion, and you're our future. So really, make change happen by becoming a part of it. Although it is hard for you to anticipate what the future may hold, be mindful of what John Lennon once wrote. Life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. You know, I certainly thought that I had my life planned out after law school graduation. I could not foresee, for example, that one year after taking and passing the DC bar, <clears throat> I'd be taking the mass bar and soon would be heading to Cambridge, Massachusetts to work as a state prosecutor. I was totally unaware that after getting married and having two, two little girls and being on top of my game at the DA's office, you know, reaching that point in life that you've aspired to, that you define as success and having it all, that my husband would then be diagnosed with cancer, that together we would battle that horrible disease for eight years that eventually would take his life at the age of 42. That was 15 years ago now. I was left devastated and with two little girls to raise, not believing that I would then one day pick up the pieces, graduate those two girls from college, and stand here before you as the first woman and the first Latina United States Attorney. <clears throat> and, and I'm happy to say, accompanied by my incredibly loving and supportive husband of five years, Tom Dolan. Hey, honey. I, I don't want it to be a downer. I'm gonna, I, I wanted to share this with you because I want to assure you that even though life has its setbacks, you should feel completely confident that the educational experience that you have received at BU Law, along with the friendships, the friendships that you have made here, have prepared you not only for a wonderful career in the law, but have also provided you with the ability to deal with whatever life may throw your way. And it certainly will throw a lot of unexpected things your way. And I have no doubt that you have found those people here at BU, because nothing bonds you quite like surviving an elevator ride with 20 of your closest friends and studying through the sounds of jackhammers and construction work. So, what would I have wanted to really know when I was sitting where you are here today? That it's gonna be okay, that it's gonna be better, really better than okay. By daring to dream, by surrounding yourself by people who believe in you and will support you, by enriching your lives, by giving back to your community and to those who have much less, whether you work in the public or the private sector, you will achieve your greatness, your greatness as you define it. So let me be the first to officially welcome you into a profession that will provide you with countless opportunities to hone your skills, to channel your passions, to take risks, and to improve this incredible world that we share. That is your mission, class of 2016, and your responsibility. And I have uncompromising faith that you're going to make major contributions in the field of law and in the world. Congratulations and thank you for letting me share this day with you. Thank you.